due to the similarity between crown and the spider, I want to take I and L, and before we now go to um, J and L, based on their similarity. Okay, so we'll start with the crown and spider. Why I had to start with crown and I jumped J and K then cut L? Because um, these two class of organism belong belong to the same kingdom. The kingdom is Animalia, and the other phylum is the about Arthropoda. But Arthropoda, but okay, we're going to be we're concerned with that this phylum Arthropod. Why are they? Why are both Arthropods? If you look at their legs, you see that their legs are all jointed. They have jointed legs or jointed appendages. This is why they are Arthropods. That's why I wanted to treat both of them together. The examiner is going to ask you similarities, differences between these two class of organisms. In terms of habitats, okay, pram is aquatic. This is mainly aquatic. Habitat is aquatic. Aquatic. You can see this animal most in marine. Marine, ocean, sea. That's where you most likely see um, prawn. Habitat of spider is terrestrial. Basically, on the ceiling, on their webs. Terrestrial on ceilings with their web. They will help, and then their web help them to stick on the ceiling. So that is on the habitat. So this is aquatic, this is terrestrial, but both belongs to arthropod because they have jointed legs. Their legs are jointed. And again, they have a special type of um, exoskeleton that is made of chitin. Chitin. Okay. Chitin is a type of skeletal material that gives protection to these two organisms. This is why they are arthropod. So in case the examiner asks to give reason why these two are putting this phylum, they are classifying to this phylum arthropod. There are two reasons why they are arthropod. One, their legs are jointed or they have jointed appendages. Two, exoskeleton is made up of chitin. Is the reason why they are that. So coming in terms of class, spider belongs to different class with pram. Spider belongs to the class. This is class of spider. Spider belongs to the class called Arachnida. 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 Ah, please, spelling is very important to score. That is the class this belongs to. Okay, you state the reason why spider is an Arachnida. Yes, it's an Arachnida because it's not an insect. Take notes. Spider is not an insect. It escaped that class of insects simply because of two reasons. You cannot have three body divisions here. What you do have here is just two body divisions. Okay? You only have two body divisions here. There are two classes for prom. Prom belongs to the same kingdom like a spider, animalia, uh, the same the phylum. Arthropoda, but class of pram is class is crustacea. 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 Why spider is arachnida? Take notes. When we talk about arachnida, let's say why is arachnida? Arachnida because the body division is just two. Okay, spider escaped insect class, uh, being a class of insects because insects are arthropod with three body divisions. They can have distinctive head, thorax, and abdomen. But in the case where the head and the thorax are fused together, fusion of head and thorax is called cephalothorax. So there is no distinctive head here. So you have just the, the fused head with thorax called cephalothorax and the abdomen. So the division is two, so insect has two body division. Um, this uh, pram also has two body division. Okay, but here 
we have cephalothorax, which is the fusion. The cephalothorax here is the fusion of the head and then and then the thorax. Okay, but why this is called classified as crustaceans? Because all these members of the crustaceans are aquatic. They are all aquatic. But this is terrestrial. Spider is terrestrial, habitat is terrestrial, and also carnivorous. Okay? This is also aquatic and also carnivorous. It's insectivorous. Spider is insectivorous, they feel it's small insects. They use their web and this structure called chilicerium. This chilicerium is used for defense as well as their web. Okay, some of these structures you see here are more for adaptation. What is the mouth used for? Mouth is used for injection of food source of food. Okay, for trapping prey. They use the mouth for feeding. Okay, they use this party part for detection. They use this for defense together with the web. They use simple eye. Make sure that this simple eye must be eight. One of the things you observe about the spider is when it has eight eyes. Eight simple eyes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's what you see. Four up, four down. Eight simple eye in spider. Then the cephalothorax is the fusion of the head and the thorax. That's cephalocephalo. It's cephalo. It's, it's a kind of cephalo means a head and then fused with a thorax. And then you have the abdomen. The abdomen and then the jointed legs. The jointed legs is for walking, okay? For walking, uh, this, the simple eye is for seeing, for vision. The cilia, the, the caliceria is for defense and also for offense. Used for defense as well as what? Offense. This organism is basically a carnivorous Insects. Carnivorous insect means that it feeds on follow insects like flies, housefly, insects, and what have you, using the web and the structure here. Okay, one thing I want us to look about these two organisms in terms of differences between them because of time. Okay, we're going to look at differences between these two animals. I'm just going to be stating it categorically into this. Maybe you pay attention here now. I'm going to look, you're going to look at this. Different between I prone and then L. Looking at this, in terms of the structure you see here, which you don't see here, structural differences, there is a swimming here, swimming rates. So in prone, there is present of swimming rates. What is the role of swimming rates? Swimming rates is for swimming, that's what it means. Swimming rates, for swimming. For swimming, because this is aquatic. So what this animal, its adaptation, for possessing this swimming rate is for swimming. So this swimming rate is adapted, it's an adaptive feature for swimming. There is no swimming rate here, so that means this is purely non aquatic. So there's no way this organism, this insect, can survive in water. So here, position of swimming rates here, absent of swimming rates. Now, there are eye, in there, there is just a simple eye structure here, but here it has eight eyes present. In terms of legs, this has four pairs of legs, total of eight legs, total of eight legs, four pairs of walking legs. If you count the number of legs here, you see it's four pairs. This is just like a tiny one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four pairs of legs, a total of eight legs is seen in spider. So spider has eight legs, but prom has five pairs of walking legs, which is total of um, ten legs. Ten legs are found here, just eight legs are seen here. Okay, apart from that, the, the abdomen in prawn is segmented. Abdomen, segmented abdomen. Yeah, the abdomen is not segmented. That's another difference between both of them. Okay, uh, critically, you see that the, the antennae is two, one is long and long, short antennae. So, antenna here in prawn is long and short, while antennae here is just short antennae in terms of comparing the two antennas. Okay, so and again you have a, a telson and a Europod. Yes, the telson 
is just like the paripa, and it's just like the paripa. Okay, the uropod is for swimming. The uropod assists swimmers for swimming. The uropod assists swimmers for swimming. Both these two structures are absent in a spider. Okay, some kind of structure you see in spider you don't see here is chilicaria or chilicaria. The chilicaria is present in spider but absent in prawn. Other examples of organisms that belong to this class, crustacean, apart from prawn, is crawfish. Crawfish can also be seen here. Crabs, families, all this are uh, crustacean. Other examples of Arachnidas, apart from spider, is um, apart from spider, is scorpion. Scorpion also belongs to this to this uh, class of a uh, arachnida. Let's quickly look at the similarities between the boats. Both possesses eye. The other one is eight. One is one. Both possesses eye. Both possesses antennae, whether long or short. Both possesses head fused with thorax. That is cephalothorax. Both has cephalothorax, both has jointed legs, both has jointed legs or jointed appendages. Okay, okay. Um, both possesses a um, both possesses abdomen. Both has abdomen. You can see abdomen here. You can see abdomen here. Both possesses abdomen. Okay, and um, um, both possesses a type of exoskeleton made of chitin. Or I can also say that both are arthropod. But in terms of structural different um, similarities, you can say both possesses exoskeleton made of chitin. In terms of structure used for respiration, okay, yes, what do we, uh, prawn use as gaseous exchange? Prawn use gill. For gaseous exchange. Gaseous exchange is by use of gill. Gaseous exchange is by use of gill. Gaseous exchange here is by use of spiracle. Gaseous exchange in spider is use of spiracle or trachea. Gaseous exchange here is by gill. Please take note. Gaseous exchange in specimen I is gill and L it is Spiracle or trachea. Gill here. Spiracle. Spiracle or trachea. Spiracle or trachea is a structure for gaseous exchange or respiration. In terms of structure used for excretion, uh, yes, yeah, structure used for excretion here, this use, um, this make use of a green gland. For expression, green glands for expression, green, green gland is used for expression, but this uses, spider uses long book for expression. So expression is by use of long book. Expression is by use of green gland. Respiration in prawn is by use of gill, and then the respiration here is by trachea or spiracle. Excretion here is by Greenland. Excretion here is by long book. Okay, these are what will be commonly asked between specimen I and specimen L. In terms of mode of feeding, yes, both of them are carnivorous. This will fend for something we eat in the aquatic environment. It's going to fend for insects using the web. The webs, the webs and the um, silicaria is used for trapping food or other animal. Why the why the part used here is the rostrum. The rostrum is the part that is used for defense and offense. Why this uses this for offense and defense? This is this costume for defense and then offense. And then we look at specimen J and K. Finally, that is tilapia fish and then tarpon. We have the remaining two specimen here. 
habitats. It's meant J and K. Let's start with the habitats. And that will be well, let's be the first question the examiner will ask. Habitat for specimen J. This means J is aquatic. Okay. Mention a few places in aquatic region where you usually see specimen 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 J. Places you can see specimen J is in the river. See them in the river, see them in the sea, see them in the ocean. You also see them in some small ponds and lake. So these are the places, aquatic environment where specimen J, that fish, is found. That is the first question the examiner will ask. The second question the examiner will ask is classify the specimen into kingdom, phylum, and then their class. To which kingdom does it belong? It's an animal. So it belongs to the kingdom. This belongs to the kingdom. Kingdom is animalia. Kingdom is animalia. And then phylum. Phylum is codata. Codata. Yes. A form of invertebrate. Sorry. A form of vertebrate. Animal with no two cords running through your back. And then the class where it belongs is spices. Is spices. Okay. That is where it belongs. Same thing is applicable to specimen K and O. So K belongs to the same kingdom with tilapia fish, that is animalia. It belongs to the same phylum codita. Was specimen K belong to amphibian. That will be the class. So for this, this is an amphibian. This is amphibian. 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 That is in terms of class. So if I'm classifying specimen K, it will be the same animalia with uh, tilapia fish. It will still be codita with but um, tilapia fish is the different classes now is this wild fish is spices um that food is amphibian okay spices means that these are all aquatic all aquatic but these are aquatic and terrestrial that is what amphibia means means that the habitat is both aquatic and at the same time terrestrial that is most of the time in the other stage you see them having webs on digits. Okay, so specimen K is both terrestrial and aquatic. In adult stage, they do have web foods or digits for swimming. For swimming. Okay, that is on the note of their classification. Okay, now in terms of their structural observation, observable features. Structural observable features. What do you observe here and what is the role of the structures? The part of the structures observed. Okay, they look at the tilapia fish. There is position of eye. The eye is for vision. The eye is for vision, for seeing. The nose is for detection of chemicals, smelling. The mouth is for intake of oxygen. The floor of the mouth is to assist the mouth. The upper column is the gill cover, it protects the gill. Okay, gill is internal, so it's not mentioned here. The gill is for gaseous exchange. When the upper column protects the gill, it acts as a gill cover. The pectoral and pelvic fin does the same function, helping the fish to steer, helping the steering in water. And then the caudal fin is to change direction. Change of direction is caudal fin. And then the scale, all this part, the body is covered with scale. The scale is for protection. I just have one question here and show the scale. The examiner must see how you lather your scale. You don't need to put the scale in all the fish, you look too artistic. You don't, uh, you don't consider the artistic diagram, you just make sure that the structures are well put in place. You don't need to have the scale all over the body here. You can just one portion the scale, the scale which protects. Organism. The body is covered here with skin, that is why it belongs to the class Pisces. They have lateral line which uh, detects vibration. Vibration. They also have tail fin in the ring which also protects the tail fin. The kuda fin and the tail fin for propellers. Movements. The anal fin for ejection. For ejection. I mentioned the lateral line for detection of vibration. And then the body is streamlined. Movement without resistance. That is why the body is streamlined. 
And this part is kind of dozer, dozer. If you do this, this part is dozer, part is dark, dark. And the dozer part is dark or grayish, while the lateral part is silver color. So this grayish part on the dozer part is also for camouflage when it puts and when it swing. This is what you can see in our spaceman, spaceman J. Coming to spaceman K, spaceman K is a sample that I've just laid for nine weeks or eight weeks maximum. So you can still see that the tail is still there. But the tail is becoming short, the tail is trying to de degenerate. Degenerate means disappearing. At the moment it disappears, that means when it becomes adult, you will no longer see the tail. But as far as this tail is still nine to eight to nine weeks around the something days, you're going to see the tail. Okay, the tail is not that prominent as for first week where you see much prominent tail. What is coming here at this point in the life of this tadpole? It no, it no longer use gear for gaseous exchange at this time. What it used as gaseous exchange, just like tilapia fish is using gear for gaseous exchange. This tadpole that is nine weeks old is using is using um, um, lungs for gaseous exchange. Lungs, not gill. So the gill has been changed by lungs at this age, at this age that is about to metamorphose into a young hair, and if you look at the eye, the eye is well bulgy, and the bulgy eye, the bulgy eye is for wider vision, the mouth is for taking in insects, the animal is insectivorous, it feeds on other animals, other insects, and if you look at the last uh, long leg at the hind limb, as the back leg, the hind limb is webbed, so the webbed foot is for hopping, and also for swimming. So in case it is found itself in a particular environment. You see some kind of poisonous land here or for defense and also for protect. One thing is very, very common between the boats organizing here. One, the, this one is aquatic, this one is aquatic and also terrestrial. Okay? The structure here used for gaseous exchange here is ill, so that it's part of up and cooling. If there's no up and cooling here, so what is used for gaseous exchange here uh, becomes uh, the lungs. Okay, here the tail is too short, so it has rays in the fin or fin rays or rays in the fin to show that it belongs to the class of Pisces. In terms of cystids, these are vertebrates. Okay, and we have to type set of teeth. It can either be homodont or heterodont. So these two have the same set of teeth. So since their teeth is not distinguished or differentiated in two different types. So these two are homodont. Their type of dentition is homodont. Homodont dentition. Their teeth is same. Homodont dentition. Okay, one thing you must know about that these two animals is their fertilization. Fertilization between these two, organism J and K. Fertilization here is external. Fertilization. Fertilization is what? External. External. What are they? What are they? External. Old lace on fertilized egg. And at the lace on fertilized egg, this on fertilized egg is hatched. Not where the eggs are inside, but it's where the eggs are laid in a particular environment. So this egg are fertilized by the male cook externally, not when the sperm is fusing. So it is fused, but it's done outside. Of the cell. So this is the clear case of external fertilization. External fertilization is a little numerous egg. This lay more egg than this. There is no case, clear case of parental care in both animals. Animals lay egg in water, and the majority of the eggs are hatched, some are not hatched. So in this case, there, are, there, are, there is a clear case of high mortality rate. Death rate is too much. That is why they have to lay. Too many eggs to compensate for their high mortality rate. Like I already said earlier about the two organisms, so something are very similar between the both animals. Like you know, the two animals are aquatic, though even though this can be aquatic and also terrestrial. That's why they are called amphibian. So in terms of similarity, both are animals. Both are 
vertebrates. What I mean by vertebrates, that is animal with backbone. But in terms of their classes, they belong to different class. What does this mean? Yes, the body of this is marked. The body of this is scale. So the scale provides impression. Just like mammals, do have heads in their skin. Like I've said, they have the same set of teeth, which is homologous. Fertilization is external. There are some other things also you see here, you can also see here, such as eye. Even though eye here is bald, big eye, eye here is compound or simple eye. You cannot compare the eye here and this eye. See here is bulgy. At this age, it's having bulgy eye. When it comes to adults, there are some kind of changes that we will see when it is up to months, up to months, not days. When it is up to two months, this short tail will totally disappear. Yes, the disappearance of this tail is due to the white blood cell. The white blood cell will start to destroy this tail, and as well, there will be reflectors of destruction of the gills. So that means the gills will start changing the rocks when this tadpole uh, is changed or is changed from tadpole to adult. The, the change, the process of change from tadpole. To adult or from egg to tadpole then to adult is called metamorphosis. It's called metamorphosis. And you can see that the metamorphosis here is said to be in common split. Okay, that is all in this video. Thanks for watching. And if you are new in this video, don't forget to click on the subscription button to get our updates on our new video. And if you have any questions so far, you can go to the comment section and drop it in there. Thank you for watching.